Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. <clears throat> the first reading is from the book of First Samuel. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistines. Paul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. Since he has defied the armies of the living God, David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor and he tried in vain to walk for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give you your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, 
You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that, that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know the Lord does not save by sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and his will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood will remember them. He will not forget the cry of the afflicted. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gate of death. So that I may tell of all your praises and rejoice in the salvation in the gates of the city of Zion. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and in the snare they set in their own foot caught. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are trapped in the works of their own hands. The wicked shall be given over to, gr to the grave, and also the peoples that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Put fear upon them, O Lord. Let the ungodly know that they are but mortal. The second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of the righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel, please. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. 
Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He, just said, he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? The early Christians adopted a simple drawing of a boat with a cross for a mast as the symbol of the church. In an age of persecutions from the outside and controversy and conflict on the inside, in their experience, the emerging church must have seemed like a boat on a storm-tossed sea. Recalling the story of Jesus' calming of the sea like those first disciples in the boat, the early Christians must have joined in their desperate prayer, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Our church, and most churches, are designed like a boat, with the altar at the bow end and the nave as the belly of the boat. In the Lutheran Church at Standard, Alberta, there's a miniature boat hanging from the ceiling to reinforce the image. Little has changed in the intervening years. The winds of change and the waters of chaos continue to beat hard on the worldwide church and people of faith. Christians are still being martyred in shocking numbers in tribal, ethnic and religious wars around the world. At home, the church is fiercely divided around, around the issues of authority, liturgy, sexuality, and cultural diversity. So the deputies to each successful general synod arrive with feelings of foreboding as they look to the business before them with suspicious eyes, preparing to build alliances of power to bolster their respective sides. Today, the prayer of many in the church is, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Our private lives are not spared stress and storm as our individual little boats are tossed about by waves of economic uncertainty and change, war, divorce, sickness, and death. Hardly a week goes by when we do not face the fearsome realities of these events, either impacting us personally, or our neighbours, or our friends in the church. And nightly the troublesome images of television news intrude into our homes from the larger world. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? In today's gospel, the Lord calms the wind and the waves and says to the tense disciples, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? He surely intended the link between faith and fear. The opposite of faith is not doubt or unbelief. 
Those tend to be doctrinal differences. The opposite of fear, faith, more often as not, is fear. We fear the unknown. We fear the undiagnosed lump in the breast or the persistent cough. We fear COVID and West Nile virus. We fear losing control of our bodies and our health because of aging. We worry about how changes in politics, technology, or the economy will influence our jobs and the income from our savings and retirement funds. Fear is like waves ever seeking to knock us off our footing, our faith footing. The story that follows, one of faith in a potentially fearful situation, was told by a Presbyterian minister. He told of his days as a Navy submariner in the Pacific during World War II. We would often come under depth charges by Japanese destroyers. The other sailors would be trembling with fear while I just leaned back and read a comic book. One of them asked how I could be so calm. I explained to him that in my childhood, I had very little supervision from my parents. So I spent many hours each day at the New Jersey beach. Sometimes a huge breaking wave would catch me by surprise and thrust me under the water, rolling me in the sand. But I learned when I would just relax Thousands of air bubbles, like the fingers of God, would catch me and lift me up to the surface. Now, whenever I find myself in trouble, I just relax and wait for the fingers of God to reach under me and lift me up. Faith is a stance towards life. According to psychology, it is a confidence that is typically acquired very early in life, when a child learns to expect his or her environment and the people in it to be reliable and trustworthy. During the Cold War, when we were all living with the possibility of nuclear annihilation, some researchers interviewed children to see how worried they were about a world war, a nuclear war. What they discovered was that the children with the least amount of fear were those whose parents were active in nuclear disarmament efforts or who regularly attended church or who were deeply involved in the social issues of their communities. These parents did not feel hopeless in the face of tremendous challenges they invested themselves in actions to change the world around them and remained optimistic that what they could contribute would make a difference. As a result, the attitudes of the parents infected the emotional and intellectual stance of their children. These children did not feel helpless. Rather, they saw that their parents and their church and other involved citizens of their community maintained faith and were doing something towards resolving the problems. A man within a period of six months lost his last surviving parent and grandparent, as well as a favorite aunt and uncle. It dawned on him at the time that all the people in his life who loved him unconditionally were dead, and that he was out in the front of the line. About the same time, his non-tenured college position was eliminated because of lack of funding. In those painful and challenging months, he wrote down his own definition of faith. Faith is the simple trust that life still can be good despite the fact that it is very painful and difficult. 
Out of the worst of experiences that could be imagined, he found many little bubbles of love and joy and hope in the form of friends, family, and church, lifting him upwards like the fingers of God. And the worst year of his life was followed by what he declares to have been one of the best years of his life. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? In these rather impatient words directed to his disciples, our Lord brings into focus the polar opposites of faith and fear. Faith is a stance and how we stand up to those things that would threaten us and how we manage our fears makes all the difference. In the midst of troubles, try reaching up your hand to God and saying help. And when you reach your hand out to others around you and say help, the fingers of God will never fail to reach down and lift you into new and reassuring experiences of God's grace. Let us stand and confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and all of God's creation. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Gregory, our Archbishop, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth. Live together in your love and, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Scott and Jenny Ramsey. We pray for Bishop Faniel and the Diocese of Northern Malawi. This week in our companion Diocese of the Windward Islands, we pray for the parish of Grace Church with St. Paul and Christ the King and the Reverend Eleanor Glasgow. In our own diocese, we pray for the parish of St. Alban Brooks, the Wardens and the Reverend Casimir Macabuza. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. Give grace to our families and friends and to all neighbors that we may serve in Christ in one another and loves as he loves us. In our parish family, we pray for the Van der Mer family. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, especially John Taylor, Mary Lou Garriuk, Ethan, Howard, Joe, Graham, Krista, Heather, Rose Shortreed, B. Henry, Tim Thompson, Stephanie, Marion Green, Natasha, Jerry Sampson, Barbara Smith, Chris and Diane Vermeeren, Michael Hayter, Marilyn Nelson, Bruce Knight, Margaret Ost, the Wolf family, David Westcott, and Elsie Pazzoli. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Oldham and all of your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole congregation to your unfailing love. Into your gracious hands, Gracious God, we commend all of whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. O oh God, we thank you for our indigenous neighbours this day. We regret the historic and contemporary racism that marred the relationship between our peoples. 
We regret the part that our church played in the administration of the residential schools. We regret the apathy of succeeding governments in the face of the need for change in the way of dealing with the native peoples throughout Canada. We especially remember at this time the way the 215 young people were treated in life and in death by that residential school system. We can only ask for your mercy on those responsible and everlasting peace for all the young people who were subjected to a misguided attempt at assimilation. We pray this in the name of the Creator of us all. We pray in the Spirit of Christ whose words of mercy and peace continue to guide our lives and actions. Amen. We ask you to bless your servant Dean at this time to be admitted to the order of the deacons and to pour your grace upon him that he may dutifully execute his office to the edifying of your church and to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, <coughs> which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Aldham and all the saints 
may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, spare our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Draw near and receive the body of our Savior Jesus Christ in remembrance that he died for us. Let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Almighty God, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May your holy food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, we give you thanks and praise for fathers young and old. We pray for young men who are starting out in their vocation of fatherhood. Give them the courage to persevere in balancing work, family life, and faith in all situations. We pray for our own Father, who supported us and challenged us. May he continue to lead us in strong and gentle ways. We pray for fathers around the world whose children are lost or suffering. May they know that the God of compassion walks with them in their sorrow. We pray for men who are not fathers but still mentor and guide us with fatherly advice. We remember fathers, grandfathers and great-grandfathers who are no longer with us but who live forever in our memory and nourish us with their love. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. From the Anglican Diocese of Calgary. Notice is hereby given that Dean David Hartung of the parish of St. Aldham Anglican Church in Vulcan will be presented as a candidate for the Holy Order of Deacon at the ordination on June 29, 2021 by the Most Reverend Gregory Kerr Wilson, Bishop of Calgary and Metropolitan of Rupert's Land. Any person knowing any just cause or impediment for which the aforementioned candidate ought not to be admitted into holy orders must now declare the same or signify the same forthwith to the administrator. And this is the third and final time of asking. So any of you who have missed out to this point, please hand in your objections. The Lord Jesus Christ be near to defend thee, within thee to refresh thee, around thee to preserve thee, before thee to guide thee, behind thee to justify thee, above thee to bless thee, who liveth and reigneth with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
cease to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.